The Type 23 class frigates are the backbone of Royal Navy's surface combatant fleet. These warships, also known as the Duke class, have proudly served the crown for over 30 years. They are now awaiting the passing of the baton to the new Type 26 and Type 31 class vessels. Today we are investigating the Type 23 class, the Duke of the Seas. For 35 years, the Type 23 class frigates have waved the white ensign nearly over all the seas. Like their ancestor, the Leander class, their silhouette has become an icon of the Royal Navy. The story of the Type 23 class frigates begins in the early 1970s. In those years, the Royal Navy was waiting to commission the Type 22 class frigates to replace the Leander class. However, the new warships were too expensive. When the first Type 22 class vessel, HMS Broadsword was laid down in 1975, its price went up to more than twice the initial plan. Therefore, the Royal Navy intended to acquire a new 100 meter long, low cost light frigate, the Type 23 class, to complement the Type 22 class in anti submarine warfare, shortly ASW missions. As those who watch the movie Pentagon Wars know, military planners always want more. They immediately began to demand a more capable ship rather than a simpler, smaller vessel. So, Yarrow had to change the Type 23 class frigate's design radically. Now, it would compete with the other shipyards Type 24 and Type 25 class designs. Still, the UK chose Yarrow's ship in 1982. However, based on the experiences of the 1982 Falklands War, the Royal Navy demanded some improvements in survivability. After two years of work, the UK ordered the first ship in 1984. Even though the required changes caused an increase in the cost, a Type 23 class was still less expensive than a Type 22 Bash 3 class frigate. The first Type 23 class frigate, HMS Norfolk, was laid down on December 14, 1985, launched on July 10, 1987, and commissioned on June 1, 1990. However, in 1986, the UK decided to change the ship's command and control system due to performance issues. Because of this delay, the early Type 23 class frigates entered service without the capability to use Seawolf missiles. The original plan was for 23 ships, but after the first Cold War, the operational requirements changed and only 16 Type 23 class frigates were constructed. The last frigate of the class, HMS St Albans, was laid down on April 18, 1999, launched on May 6, 2000 and commissioned on June 6, 2002. Chile bought HMS Norfolk and HMS Marlborough in 2005 and HMS Grafton in 2007, renaming them as CS Almirante Cochrane, CS Almirante Condel and CS Almirante Lynch respectively. The steel hull of the Type 23 class is broader than the previous British designed frigates. The length corresponds to the distance between peaks in a typical North Atlantic swell. Thus, the frigate possesses excellent seawardiness and it is rare for waves to break over the forecastle, rendering the bulwarks unnecessary. All vertical surfaces of the Type 23 class are sloped at 7 degrees to reduce their radar cross section. The superstructure does not have 90 degree corners and the design incorporates a minimal number of radar wave traps. The remaining flat horizontal surfaces are coated with radar absorbing materials. All major equipment is raft mounted and most machinery parts are installed in acoustic cabinets to reduce the acoustic signature. The drive shafts are short while the skew bladed propellers have a fixed pitch to avoid the noise produced by controlled pitch propellers. There is a bubble device to reduce the hull noise. The Type 23 class is the first surface combatant with a combined diesel electric and gas propulsion system. This system provides an extended range and allows for very quiet running during ASW operations. The diesel electric propulsion system gives the ship a speed of 15 knots. The first seven frigates have Rolls Royce Pay SM 1A gas turbines, whereas the later ships have SM 1Cs. Before the midlife refit, the Type 23 class frigates of the Royal Navy had four 2025 horsepower Paxman Valenta 12CM diesel generators. Now they have the new MTU made diesel generators while the Chilean ships preserve the old propulsion system. After the midlife refits, the ship was fitted with a transom flap which increased its top speed and reduced fuel consumption by 13%. 
The Royal Navy officially cites the top speed of the Type 23 class as 28 knots. However, HMS Lancaster reached 32 knots even before her midlife refit. The bow-mounted sonar has a vast dome which increases the frigate's overall draft. Therefore, the ship must go astern while anchoring to prevent the anchor from fouling the dome. The Type 23 class is the first Western surface combatant equipped with a vertical launching system, providing the ship with a 360-degree air defense coverage without turning the launchers toward the threats. The previous Sea Wolf and the current Sea Scepter air defense missiles of the frigate are highly effective against sea skimming anti ship missiles. Therefore, the Type 23 class is not fitted with a barreled close in weapon system. The Type 23 class has a 27 meter long and 16 meter wide flight deck. The Royal Navy deploys a Wildcat HMA 2 or Merlin HM 2 onto the ship, while the Chilean Navy prefers the AS 532 SC Cougar helicopter. The complement of the Type 23 class is 181 people. The ship has a length of 133 meters, a beam of 16.1 meters and a drought of 7.3 meters. Its standard and fully loaded displacements are about 3560 and 4270 tons respectively. The combined diesel electric and gas propulsion system comprises four 2210 shaft horsepower MTU 12V 4000 M53 diesel generators, two 3,996 horsepower GEC electric motors, and two 15,550 horsepower Rolls Royce Marine Spay SM1C gas turbines. Its top speed is 28 knots. The Type 23 class has a range of 7,800 nautical miles, in other words, 14,445 kilometers. After the midlight refit, the Royal Navy's Type 23 class frigates were fitted with the Type 997 Artisan 3D radar. This radar can detect objects as small as a tennis ball traveling at Mach 3 over a range of more than 25 km and monitor over 900 objects simultaneously. It is approximately 5 times more efficient than the previous Type 996 Mod 1 radar which the Chilean frigates still possess. The frigate's initial anti-ship missile is the active radar-guided RGM-84 Harpoon, which has a 222kg semi-armor-piercing warhead and a 124km range. Its maximum speed is Mach 0.86. Currently, only HMS Lancaster retains the Harpoons. The Royal Navy began to fit other frigates with the land-attack-capable NSM missile. It has a top speed of Mach 0.95. Its range exceeds 185km. The NSM has a 125kg high-explosive blast fragmentation warhead and a high-resolution passive imaging infrared seeker with advanced software that can detect, identify and discriminate between ships independently. As the missile can choose its targets autonomously, it doesn't require pre-targeting before launch. Currently, HMS Portland and HMS Somerset carry the NSM while other frigates await conversion. The Sea Scepter air defense missile, which replaced the Sea Wolf, is designed to defend ships against saturation attacks from supersonic anti-ship missiles. It has an effective range of between less than 1 km to over 25 km and a speed of Mach 3. The initial 114mm Mark 8 Mod 0 guns of the Type 23s have been upgraded to the Mod 1 level, which contains an all-electric loading system and a smaller radar cross-section. It has a rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute and a range of 27.5 km. The 30mm remotely controlled DS-30M Mark IIs have replaced the previous locally operated DS-30B guns. Its rate of fire is 100 to 200 rounds per minute and the effective range of the 30mm gun is 5.1 km. The Chilean frigates retain the DS-30B. The Type 23 class frigates also have two 324mm twin torpedo tubes for the Stingray torpedo, which has a 35kg directed energy warhead. It is effective at a depth of 750 meters and has a range of 11 kilometers. Its speed is 45 knots. The British frigates also have two 7.62 mm Gatling guns and four 7.62 mm machine guns. The Type 23 class frigates have served in all corners of the world. In 1994, HMS Norfolk became the first British warship to visit South Africa in over 20 years. HMS Richmond anchored in the Russian port of Vladivostok three years later and became the first Royal Navy vessel to visit Russia in over a century. 
HMS Norfolk, HMS Montrose, HMS Northumberland, HMS Richmond and HMS Sutherland patrol the waters surrounding the Falkland Islands. HMS Norfolk, HMS Argyle and HMS Iron Duke participated in the 2000 British military intervention in the Sierra Leone Civil War. HMS Norfolk, HMS Argyle, HMS Lancaster, HMS Iron Duke, HMS Westminster, HMS Northumberland, HMS Richmond and HMS Portland surveilled around the Caribbean, especially in Canor narcotics operations. Also, many Royal Navy Type 23 class frigates participated in Canor narcotics operations in the Persian Gulf. Yet, these warships were not present solely for the war against drug smugglers in the region. During the 2003 Iraq War, HMS Marlborough and HMS Richmond provided naval gunfire support to the Royal Marines who fought at El Fa. After the USS Cole attack, HMS Marlborough was the first naval ship on the scene to assist her. HMS Monmouth, HMS Montrose and HMS Northumberland protected the merchant ships of the Somalian coast from pirates. During the 2011 military intervention in Libya, HMS Iron Duke destroyed a gun battery outside Misrata and she fired eliminating rounds to light up targets for NATO combat aircraft. Also, HMS Westminster and HMS Sutherland joined the naval blockade against Libya. In January 2024, HMS Richmond joined HMS Diamond and HMS Lancaster in the Red Sea to counter Houthi attacks on commercial shipping. On March 9, 2024, she successfully intercepted two attack drones. The Type 23 class frigates intensively tailed Russian warships. In 2016, HMS Sutherland escorted the Russian frigate Admiral Grigorovich through the English Channel. HMS Richmond, alongside HMS Duncan, tailed a fleet of Russian Navy vessels, including the aircraft carrier Admiral Flota Sovietskava Soyuza Kuznetsov, passing through the English Channel on their way to Syria. HMS Somerset intercepted the Russian destroyer Witsa Admiral Kulakov, a tanker and a tug that had entered the United Kingdom's exclusive economic zone. In 2017, HMS Sutherland escorted the Russian corvettes Sabrazi Tirnih and Boyki in the region. HMS Somerset monitored the kilo-class submarine Krasnodar as it transited the English Channel. HMS St. Albans escorted the Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Flota Sovietskava Soyuza Kuznetsov through the English Channel. In 2018, she also escorted the Russian frigate Admiral Flota Sovietskava Soyuza Gashko, conducting sea trials in the North Sea close to UK waters. In 2024, HMS Iron Duke along with the tanker RFA Tide Force first monitored the frigate Admiral Galavko, the oceanographic research vessel Yuntai and the tanker Vyazma as they passed through the North Sea and the English Channel. Then, she took over the shadowing duties of a second Russian group consisting of the frigate Neos Trashimi and the replenishment oiler Academic Passion. HMS Marlborough, HMS Argyle, HMS Monmouth, HMS Richmond and HMS Grafton lost their sealing helicopters in various accidents. In 2015, HMS Lancaster became the first ship in the Royal Navy to deploy with the new Wildcat HMA-2 helicopter. So far, two Type 23 class frigates, HMS Monmouth and HMS Argyle have been decommissioned. HMS Argyle was sold to BAE Systems for apprentice training. HMS Monmouth, HMS Montrose, HMS Westminster and HMS Northumberland are awaiting disposal. The Type 26 and Type 31 programs have experienced some delays and tension with Russia is continually escalating. Despite these facts, the British government has not stepped back from decommissioning the Type 23 class. British politicians have repeatedly proven that they can sacrifice the Royal Navy's combat power for economic reasons. Whatever the outcome, the Type 23 class frigates are undoubted legends in Royal Navy history. They have served the crown well until now and will continue to do so for a while longer. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.